So, are you excited about all the new rules and the August 17th big date? Oh my gosh. Well, the first thing that we wanna to say to you is take a breath. In its simplest form, the biggest change is that we, that was very good, we are no longer able to advertise to one another, communicate to one another via the MLS what the buyer broker compensation is going to be. So, you want some attitude here? We got some attitude for you. And so I hope you'll keep listening as we go through what we think you ought to be thinking. It's an opportunity. That's right. what I think we ought to be thinking. Yes, it's an opportunity to discuss compensation with your buyers yep. for the first time ever. For some people, 17 mm -hmm. states. This has been the law, the rule for a long, long time. 17 states. So if your state isn't one of them, ah, everyone's losing their mind. Well, calm down for Pete's sake. You are in sales. Your job is to be a salesperson. And so, understand also that it's going to be the Wild West for a while. Yeah. The DOJ has no idea of unintended consequences. There's a lot of things that have not been thought out yet and a lot of things we're going to discover. So, as Mary says, take a deep breath. Yes, we're in the Wild West, but guess what? You know how to sell, and that'll take you through this. Look at it as an opportunity, and then number two, and this is most important of all, listings are the still name of the game. The name of the game, right, <laughs> you know that. And you can shout from the rooftops how your sellers are gonna compensate buyers, just not in the MLS. There's lots of ways to do it. Some people are getting a dedicated phone line and putting into the MLS remarks, call this number for listing details. And when they do, they get a voice message saying, here's how much compensation we offer our uh, buyer brokers for our listings. Now, of course, that is not legally binding, right? You could wear a t-shirt that says, I pay out 3% or 5% or whatever it is that you choose to have your sellers pay out whatever the sellers agree to. However, make sure that you've got the legal forms as well. And I wanna talk about those forms for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, most of our clients, well, all the big companies, all the associations, how many sessions of training have you been to to figure out the forms? And everybody's got different ones. So this big company created these forms, they're gonna use those. That state created these forms, they think everybody should use it. This association has tweaked those forms and wants you, so you gotta to listen I to your broker here. I wish I had the here. form creating concession for this. <laughs> yeah. These people are making a fortune. Well, they're staying up all night worrying about how to, how to protect yeah. our industry. I am grateful to them all. So you got to decide right now. My number one piece of advice is you decide right now who you're going to listen to. Who's the one that you are going to follow? Because there's contradictory. If you're doing webinars and workshops and going to different, you're, first of all, you're wasting a lot of time. Mm -hmm. you got to go to your broker and say, all right, whose advice am I following? Where are the forms? And which ones do you want me to work on? And then tune everything else out. You know, it was a long time ago I met Floyd Wickman and he said, stop listening to the news. It's all bad. Some of it's not true. This is even before we had fake news. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it doesn't lift you up to do your job. Right. So learn which forms you're going to use. Get good at understanding those. And when you are confident about what they say, you're gonna, it's like kind of taking your 37th listing. You're gonna go, yeah, down here it means this and this over here means that and all you need to do is sign. Most of the people that sign your form are signing it without reading it anyway. You know that's true. Most of them trust you. And so when you are confident, they're gonna sign whatever you tell them to sign. So back to Mostly. listings are the name of the game. Mm -hmm. And remember, we know how to explain to sellers why they shouldn't discount their commission. Right. We'll just use those same explanations and all the new ones you're going to learn as to why they should offer buyer broker compensation. But I wanted to make one other point. All right. What does Floyd tell us about what's your mindset going on a listing appointment? You're going over there to see if you even want it. That's right. Now, we're not binding brokers to us for life or binding buyers to us for life. Just like with the listing. Let's go on a date before we get married. 
You know, you're not asking buyers for that. I think there's going to be a, a try a dating period. Maybe it's a one showing agreement. And then you decide, because maybe you don't want to work with them. Maybe they don't want to work with you, but you'll figure it out. It's not like you have to put on a presentation and get them manacled to you for life. It's a trial. But you should put on a presentation. Yes. So how long have you heard we Wickman folks saying you need to get a sit down appointment with buyers. Floyd mm. used to call that CETO, come into the office. Now, no matter where they come into, Starbucks, you go to their apartment, the hood of a car, you still, if you're gonna, you're gonna explain agency and their options, you're gonna explain your tools and services, and you're gonna get them to sign something, or, or you're not gonna show them houses for free, are you? So you gotta get those forms figured out and then you gotta work on your selling skills. Yeah, it's going to be a two-part presentation. And the first part is what are your options, how to work with an agent or without one, because that is one of their options. Yep. And then the second part is about representation or engagement, as we say, just as you would with any certified professional, you do an engagement agreement. Right, and when you say representation, always keep in mind that we're an international company. We've got different states with different rules. It could be you're a transaction broker, so follow your broker's advice because they've been waking up in the middle of the night going, oh yeah, don't forget to tell them this. So let's take their advice. And let's, number one, see this as an opportunity. Yeah. Number two, remember listings are the name of the game. If you're out of inventory, you're out of business because it's an inventory business. And remember your CETO skills, close for the sit down. Everything else, trust your selling skills, trust your caring, trust the relationships you know how to build and have already built, and you're gonna be just, just fine. fine.